fact that there was something wrong. Again, I don't have that sp specific information. You know what time it was? I don't know. You know what time this United flight left? I have no information on the United flight How right now. How unusual would it be for like, for New York to heading to? Again, I don't, I'm not familiar with the particular flight patents they uh, may have filed. Was it a non-stop flight to Los Angeles? I believe it was. At what time, sir, were the flights uh, stopped and closed? What? At what time? What time was the airport what shut down? The airport shut down? I believe we shut the airport down to arriving flights uh, somewhere around 9.15. And uh, departing flights shortly after that. What happened to the flights that were in the air? They, they were diverted to other airports. How long was the airport? Uh, again, we're going to assess all the measures that we've taken. We want to, uh, obviously, the safety and security of anyone who works here at the uh, airport, any of our passengers, is a top priority. Do you have a lot of baggage that isn't That's Joe Lawless, uh, uh, part of the security uh, effort at Boston's Logan Airport. A number of the planes that have been involved in this extraordinarily horrendous event today uh, began their day in Boston. Boston Airport, like airports now across the entire country, is closed. Every airport in the country closed. International flights, as you heard Mr. Lawless say, uh, being sent to, uh, to Canada as they approach the United States. Um, these are scenes, these are, uh, uh, this is tape from the ground, and obviously this, this is unedited tape, so kind of bear with us. It's a little raw at this point, but this was on the ground at the trades around the train center here in New York as the events began unfolding. And as you can see there, you can see that huge hole in the building of the trade center, both buildings standing at the time. You can see that where the plane, it almost looks like it came through the entire building. And uh, Aaron, uh, we should we should remember what Wesley Clark told Judy Woodruff a couple of minutes ago about how much U.S. authorities have been worried about such an attack, how hard they've worked to try to fight it, how something may have gone wrong. And I believe we have on the phone right now someone who both in fact and fiction has dealt with justice, and that's author Tom Clancy. Uh, Mr. Clancy, this is, uh, I guess, a terrible case of life imitating art. I suppose you could say that. Uh, it's a noteworthy incident. I mean, it, it, it's not the sort of thing you... It, it's, it's the sort of thing that's best, best left in a novel rather than in real life. Unfortunately, one of the problems with being an author is uh, is keeping up with reality. But, Mr. Clancy, you also are, are very well plugged into this world. From your own knowledge, how concerned have the authorities been that something of this scale could possibly hit on the uh, uh, on American soil? Uh, it's Jeff Greenfield, right? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay, well, Jeff, you've been here to the house. I mean, it's. Uh, I had a conversation some years ago with a, an Air Force general about the possibility of rather like this. I ended up putting in one of my books where you, you go where a bad guy takes a, an aircraft into the Capitol building during a joint session of Congress, which could effectively decapitate the you know the whole government. Um, and uh, at the time, it seemed rather humorous. You know, I, I, I said, "Surely you've thought about things like this." And he said, "Well, to the best of my knowledge, nobody in my office has looked at this, but I promise you, Monday morning they will be." Uh, presumably, they've been, you know, they've they've considered this possibility for some time. The, the the big problem is a person who's willing to 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 lose his own life in 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 you know voluntarily in a in a terrorist incident. The people like that are fairly rare. Self-preservation is indeed the first law of nature, and a per you know, not too many people are willing to throw their lives away, and those who do it generally do it for religious reasons, because they think there's something good waiting for them on the other side of death. Uh, in a case like this, you know, that, that's going to lean people towards uh, talking about you know, is, is, is Islamic fanatics, but we need to remember that you know, Islam is a religion, and it's, it's a religion with, with beliefs that are not terribly different from Judaism or Christianity or they believe in a God of love and justice the same as we do, and they're not all maniacs. And, and religious tolerance is one of the principles of our country. We need to hold on to that principle very tightly right now because it's the principles you hold on to when things are tough that, that really count. Uh, fair yeah, point. This, this, this is, you know, this was an, an, an act you know, by a, a small number of, of, of madmen. And uh, madmen don't characterize any, any part of humanity. Tom, it's Aaron Brown. When you would talk to these officials uh, in doing the research, 
did they see an attack of this enormity or were they more concerned with these sort of the devastating but smaller kind of hit and miss attacks that we've seen over the last seven eight years well you don't ordinarily expect terrorists to, do, to display this degree of expertise in flying an airplane is not all that easy uh kidnapping or you know hijacking an airplane particularly you know with the safeguard we have the airports right now is not a trivial exercise but unfortunately you know the, the the security you have at airports is is not perfect because nothing human beings do is perfect Somebody thought very, you know, very carefully and, and hard and long about this, and then they got some some madmen to actually take control of the aircraft. Uh, Tom, stay with me for a second. We we yes, we uh, a few moments ago uh, told our viewers that United Airlines was concerned about another. Uh, United lost a flight near. Pittsburgh earlier today, an official said they were also concerned about United Flight 175, Boston to Los Angeles, and now we have reports that concern was justified. A second plane has gone down, United Flight 70, 175, again, that was from Boston to L.A., uh, and as you look at the Pentagon, which was also hit by a plane earlier in the day, Jeff? Yes, it, Tom, you were mentioning that, that uh, it, this is such a rare act, and yet we now know of at least four commercial airliners that apparently were hijacked and either crashed or crashed into buildings, causing death and havoc of an unimaginable scale. So what, whoever is behind this, this is of a dimension that literally uh, dwarfs even fantasy. Pretty big, but my dreams, and you know, fortunately or unfortunately, didn't get quite this large. Uh, it, it's not, generally speaking, it's not credible to think that you're going to find, a, you know, a, a, more than one person who's willing to, to do something like this because people who are willing to throw their lives away are fairly rare. In this case, uh, they got, you know, somebody who was well organized and, and, and produced a well planned and reasonably well executed operation. Well, it, and we need to find out who it was, and then to go after him. But that's you know that's going to take time. But we do have the people to do that if they have the proper support from the executive branch of the government and from uh, and from the general population of our country to identify, locate, and deal with uh, the people who performed this act. The president uh, said earlier today, shortly after the Trade Center attacks, uh, the president characterizing these as terrorist attacks and said that the United States government will do whatever it is necessary to hunt down those people responsible. I think it is fair to say, uh, Tom, Jeff, all of uh, you on the line here, it is fair to say that what we know is that this is an extraordinarily large operation and what we don't know in a way is just how big it is. Uh, it seems that in each passing moment or so we get another report of another incident and and our instinct tells us that they are all connected uh, we have a number of planes down two american airline jets two united jets down we have a plane that hit the pentagon we had two that hit the trade center uh, you're talking about something that is i i think it's fair to say jeff it is beyond anything any of us could have imagined. Could possibly have imagined. I think that we, those of us who, who dealt with Oklahoma City, those of us who dealt with the Trade Center here in 93, as we both did, uh, you say, that is, that is awful what happened. And you look at what appears to be playing out today, and we have no idea, no idea yet, what the loss of life will be, certainly in the hundreds, we know that hospitals here in New York are overwhelmed with people being brought there all over the city of New York and beyond. The, the only piece of news that is the least bit, I guess, uh, reassuring is that, is that there is no report of any kind of chemical result. That is, the folks on the ground around the World Trade Center, the rescue crews, the survivors, there is absolutely no indication at this moment that there was any kind of, bio, of bioterrorism involved. Not that what happened here isn't horrific enough. A absolutely. And uh, let me just add on again, small, medium-sized pieces of information as we go. 
Uh, all airlines in the country are closed down. Uh, all airports in the country are closed down. We now are being told that the U.S.-Mexican border has been sealed. Uh, we don't know if that is just simply part of a plan that the government puts into effect under a worst case circumstance, this is certainly that, or if there is some specific reason why a decision was made to shut down that border.